Hey everyone, Path here, and in this video I want to discuss a famous and potentially slightly controversial comment that Albert Einstein made about quantum mechanics. Spoiler alert, it's not actually that controversial, but it is very interesting, and I've actually made a whole line of merch around this quote. But more on that later. If you like this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Whenever you try to look into Albert Einstein's views on the theory of quantum mechanics, one quote keeps popping up in various forms. It's usually something along the lines of, God does not play dice, and is used to either suggest that Einstein hated quantum mechanics, or that he strongly believed in God. Now, based on what I've read, neither of these is quite true. To understand what Einstein was talking about, let's first remind ourselves of the basic principles in quantum mechanics. The theory suggests that any system that we are studying, whether that's a single electron in empty space, or an electron and proton forming a hydrogen atom, or anything else, can be described by a wave function. This is basically a mathematical function that contains all the information we can know about our system. Most commonly, we discuss this in terms of particle positions, where we are most likely to find our particle when we make a measurement to look for it. But the wave function also contains information about stuff like what spin our particle could be found with, or what energy level it's likely to be found in. And the wave function is directly related to these probabilities. If we take the wave function and we square it, then this gives us the probabilities of finding our particles in each of the possible energy levels or regions of space, or whatever measurement we are considering. If you want a more in-depth discussion of quantum wave functions, by the way, then check out this video I made a little while ago. Now, the most common interpretation of quantum mechanics these days, known as the Copenhagen interpretation, suggests that before we actually make a measurement on our system, the particle is in a sort of superposition or blend of all the possible states it could be found in. And it's only once we make the measurement that the system collapses into one definite state, randomly. This sounds a bit strange, but the idea is that if we were to do the same measurement on the exact same system 100 times, or equivalently create 100 identical copies of the system, and then do the measurement that we're talking about, then we'd get the measurements given by the probabilities calculated by the wave function. Since this one was more likely according to the wave function, we'd find this measurement result more often, for example, and so on and so forth. But for an individual measurement, we'd have no way of telling what state it would collapse into before we actually made the measurement according to the Copenhagen interpretation. Now, like I said, this sounds quite bizarre, and we might ask the question, how do we know that the system isn't already in a particular state, and we just find out which one it's in when we measure it? Well, that's because we can incorporate both of these ideas into our mathematical theory and see where that leads us. The aim is to find a difference between these two scenarios, mathematically, and then test them using real-life experiments. It turns out, all the experiments we've done so far suggest that the reality is not as simple as we just find out what state the system is already in once we make a measurement on it. There's a wonderful video on YouTube that I'll link in the description, which explains this idea in its full mathematical glory, and it shows you how there's a genuine difference between systems whose wave functions collapse when we measure them in a random way, and systems about which we just gain information when we make the measurement. But anyway, here's where Einstein comes into the picture. He accepted that we might not just be gaining information when we make a measurement, but he was bothered by the idea that a measurement randomly causes a collapse of the wave function into one of the possible measurement states. He felt like there was probably something hidden that we had not yet discovered that influenced the system to fall into a particular measurement state once we made the measurement. In fact, now's a good time to look at what he actually said in a letter to Max Born in 1926. He said, Quantum mechanics is very worthy of respect but an inner voice tells me this is not the genuine article after all. The theory delivers much, but it hardly brings us closer to the old one's secret. In any event, I am convinced that he is not playing dice. 
So this is the famous quote we're talking about, and we can see two important things here. Firstly, he very clearly states that quantum mechanics is worthy of respect. He does not hate the theory or think it's completely wrong, but maybe just that it doesn't give us the full picture. And secondly, assuming the translation to English is correct, he does not directly reference God, even though the quote is often simplified to God does not play dice. As far as I can tell, based on what I've read, Einstein was not particularly religious, but rather referred to God as the so far unknown forces and mechanisms that drive the universe we see around us. Now, we can ask the question, why was Einstein so against the idea that a measurement causes a random collapse into a particular measurement state? The answer to that is that he had very successfully described the universe on a large scale using his special and general theories of relativity, two theories that were both deterministic and local. And these were the key to his understanding of how the universe works, and to some extent his idea on how the universe should work. Determinism is the idea that there is no randomness in a physical system if we find out enough information about it. For example, a ball moving at this speed in this direction will be found at this position exactly a time t later, even if we don't measure the ball's position and speed at every instant in time. And crucially, every time we repeat the same experiment, we get the exact same result. This is clearly not the case according to what quantum mechanics says. And this is what he meant when he said playing dice, the inherent randomness of the system collapsing into a particular state when we measured it like rolling a dice and landing on a supposedly random number. A more subtle example of underlying determinism that isn't obvious is the study of weather. We can gather lots and lots of data about how clouds are forming and how air is moving around to find out what the weather is likely to be in the next few hours and days. And we don't always get it right, but in a deterministic world, that's only because of the colossal amount of data we'd have to collect in order to get it perfectly right. We'd need to know the position and speed of every single air particle at a given point in time to perfectly predict the weather at a later time. But if the world is deterministic, then this is possible if we just knew all of this massive amounts of information. And Einstein thought maybe quantum mechanics was like that, but on a deeper level. Maybe there were some hidden variables that we could not access in the universe, but that would deterministically cause the system to collapse into one particular measurement state when the measurement was made. In essence, it told the system collapse into this state when we make a measurement in this way at this time, hence deterministic, not random. As we mentioned earlier, Einstein was also keen about quantum mechanics being a local theory. The idea of locality is that an object or an event can only influence another object or event once we've allowed enough time for light or something slower to have passed from the first object to the second object. For example, let's imagine we have a ball that changes color when light falls on it. From the moment we switch on this light bulb, we have to allow enough time for light, the fastest moving thing in the universe, to get from the bulb to the ball before it can change color. If the ball changes color quicker than the light from the bulb can get to it, then one of two things is true. Either locality does not exist, things can be caused by other things quicker than we can send signals between the two things, or there was another light source nearer to the ball <laughs> that caused the ball to change color. Now, locality was another important part of Einstein's theories of relativity. No two objects can be causally linked meaning one causes a change in another, unless we allow enough time for light or something slower to pass between them. But in quantum mechanics, due to this wave function collapse upon the measurement that's being made, Einstein showed that a very strange system could exist. The mathematics of quantum mechanics suggested we could have an entangled system of two particles where the only thing we know before we make any measurements was the total spin of the system. Spin is just a property of certain particles, just like mass or charge, except that spin is a vector quantity, and for electrons, it can be referred to as spin up or spin down. These are the two possible measurement results. So for example, we might have a system where we know the total spin of the system is zero, but we don't know the individual spins of each particle. 
meaning we could have this particle being spin up and this particle being spin down so that they cancel each other out and the spin is zero or vice versa. The problem comes in when we consider separating these particles really far so that light would take an appreciably long time to travel between them and then measuring one of the particles for their spin. According to quantum mechanics, the measurement causes a collapse of the wave function into one possible state. But because the wave function describes both particles, or equivalently, we know the total spin, this suggests that making a measurement here immediately, immediately causes a collapse of this other particle too. Now immediately is obviously faster than the light could travel between the two particles. So this is the confusing thing. Now what I've just described here is a very simplified version of the EPR paradox used by Einstein to show that quantum mechanics must at least be slightly wrong or incomplete because it broke locality and determinism, which he thought was impossible. I've made a detailed video about the EPR paradox, which you can check out up here if you're interested. Einstein preferred a hidden variable theory that was deterministic and local, so that something that was not necessarily accessible by us while making measurements, aka the hidden variables, could be used to calculate what result would be obtained when a particular measurement was made at a particular time on a particular system. And since the hidden variable was found in the whole system, this meant it didn't necessarily break locality either. A few years later, a physicist called John Bell came along and develop the mathematics for this deterministic and local hidden variable theory to the point where we could conduct experiments and figure out whether the quantum mechanical version was right or Einstein's version was right. And all of the experiments that have been done since then have showed that Einstein was wrong, or at least partly wrong. The experiments have ruled out any hidden variable theory that is both deterministic and local but it hasn't yet necessarily ruled out a hidden variable theory that is deterministic, but not local. That may still be possible. And of course, the Copenhagen interpretation is still possibly correct. No hidden variables, no determinism, no locality. I'd like to make a couple of videos in the future discussing some other interesting interpretations of quantum mechanics that are some combinations of these three things. So please let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments down below. The point is though, that Einstein recognized that quantum mechanics was extremely good at predicting how the universe around us behaves on a small scale. But he was uncomfortable with some of the implications and suggested a possibly different explanation. And his quote about God not playing dice is a lot more subtle than it's often made out to be, or at least from what I've seen before. Both in the fact that he did not hate quantum mechanics, he thought it was pretty good, and in the fact that he didn't necessarily believe in God. But the quote itself really stuck with me personally because it's such an interesting idea. And also because Einstein may have been slightly on the wrong track with his ideas about quantum mechanics. Just goes to show even the best, most brilliant minds aren't always 100% right. And because I like this quote so much, I decided to make a quantum dice design as a reminder to myself to always be humble about my own ideas and preconceptions and also as a tribute to Einstein, he was one of my heroes growing up, and his brilliant ideas, which inevitably taught us more about quantum mechanics. This design, of course, features on my merch, with the Schrodinger equation, the main equation of quantum mechanics, taking up one face of our die. All of that's linked down below if you'd like to check it out. Anyway, with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my Giga patrons and all of my other patrons over on my Patreon page, which is also linked down below if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.